What is up guys, it's your boy Nostalgia Cacus, and today we are going to be showcasing the Icebreaker Exotic Snipe Rifle, an iconic weapon from Destiny 1 that has made its way into Destiny 2 within Episode Revenant by being the Vesper's Host Dungeon Exotic Reward. So, is this weapon any good in Destiny 2? Does it live up to its icon status from D1? Well, let's get started. Now, first of all, how do you actually acquire this weapon? Well, interestingly, there was kind of two ways initially. First of all, if you were able to complete the Vesper's Host Dungeon on Contest Mode, which is now over, as you can see right here, it was a guaranteed drop. However, now, since normal mode is the only mode available, you are just going to have to rely on RNG. It's essentially going to turn into every other dungeon exotic like the Buried Bloodline, etc. You just have to hope you get it at the end of a dungeon completion. Now, in terms of what this weapon actually does, well, let's take a look at those exotic perks. First of all, in terms of its intrinsic perk, it has no backpack. Final blows or assists with any other weapon or ability have a chance to create ammo for the icebreaker. Defeating powerful combats will create multiple rounds. So this is actually an insanely unique perk. The icebreaker, because of this perk, is going to function differently than frankly any other special ammo weapon in the game. The economy for this weapon is really, really crazy, but we'll get to that in a sec. Let's take a look at its other unique exotic perk, and that is going to be icebreaker. Now this says defeating a target with this weapon causes them to explode. Precision final blows or shattering a frozen target instead triggers an ignition. And you read that right. Any precision final blow, whether it's a thrall, whether it's a powerful combatant, whether it's a guardian in PvP will cause a full-fledged ignition. Ignitions are very powerful. They do a lot of damage. They have a big radius and they can be improved because they are a solar keyword. For example, Facet of Ruin for your prismatic subclasses will improve the radius of an ignition explosion and that should work with the icebreaker. So the fact that you get that solar keyword in ignition, you could actually spec further into it within your class and that is crazy. But let's just talk about how this weapon like actually works and functions in game because again, the ammo economy is so, so weird. So this weapon has a 10 round magazine. That is actually crazy. Like that is more than what you're going to get with like any other sniper in the game, even like a rapid fire a sniper rifle uh, with backup mag. It's not going to touch 10 rounds. However, you have no reserves. So those 10 rounds are your magazine and also your reserves. Super importantly, guys, it's not that you can only generate ammo from getting kills with your other weapons. That is going to be a really common way to generate ammo, but you can still gain special ammo in the usual ways. So if you have a special ammo brick on the ground, you can pick it up and it gives your icebreaker special ammo. No, it won't give it a ton of special ammo, but it will still work. If you're out of ammo and you rally at a flag, you will get full icebreaker ammo. Again, you only get those 10 rounds, but that's a pretty awesome thing. It's not like it's forcing you to only get ammo for getting kills. And like, if you rallied, you'd have no ammo. So it's actually very, very easy to keep the icebreaker topped up on ammo, even though you only do have those 10 rounds. And those 10 rounds are devastating. So like, if you actually take a look at the impact, this belongs to a brand new sniper rifle archetype. As you can see right here, if I take a look at my Macabre, which is just a normal aggressive frame sniper, it has 90 impact and 72 rounds per minute. But the Icebreaker has 100 impact and it's bumped down to 49 rounds per minute. Now, what difference does this actually make in game? Well, let's find out by testing it against our good old friend, Kali. Now, Kali does have pretty high precision hit multipliers, but we're testing uh, these two snipers in the exact same environment. So for the icebreaker, a precision hit against Kali will do a whopping 103 thousand damage, almost 104 
thousand damage. All right, now switch over to the Macabre. Again, a totally normal, uh, aggressive frame sniper, and it is capable of doing 70,000 damage, like 70 and a half thousand damage. So, what does this mean in terms of DPS? So if we factor in the rates of fire, using the damage we were getting for those Kali headshots, we have an almost identical DPS value. So you can see right here, Icebreaker is doing 84,723 DPS and the aggressive frame was doing 84,688. Like they are virtually identical. This is actually quite good for the Icebreaker. It means it doesn't fall behind in terms of DPS for being in a different damage archetype, but it just hits way harder. Like we are doing like 30,000 more damage for a single shot. And this massive step up in damage actually makes a big difference for PVE thanks to its trait because we want to be getting one shot kills because we want to be causing those explosions. And this is really where the icebreaker kind of shines in PVE and you've been seeing it a ton in the background gameplay. Normally, if you're using a sniper, there's not really a reward for getting a headshot against a lower tier enemy. Like who really cares? But with the icebreaker causing an ignition for simply headshotting, again, literally any enemy, a thrall, an acolyte, whatever, you get that massive ignition which causes so much damage over a huge radius. And then on top of that, if you miss your headshot, if you just get a normal kill, if you're killing a shank which doesn't even have a headshot multiplier, you still get a pretty decent explosion, almost akin to a firefly or a dragonfly explosion. So you get firefly for no headshot, which is usually like the best case scenario for getting a headshot with this type of weapon. But then if you do get a headshot, it's an absolutely massive ignition explosion if you do get that kill. So there is actually a significant amount of payoff for using this as almost an ad clear weapon, literally one shot into a group of ads. And because it's a precision weapon, you can pick which ad you want to kill. There's a bunch of more powerful enemies or shielded enemies. You shoot the one red bar and then the ignition is going to still devastate those shielded enemies. You can usually have one follow-up shot on those shielded enemies, kill them, and then the other ignition finishes them off. Especially because there's no cooldown at all for the ignitions. As long as you're picking off headshots, you're getting ignition after ignition after ignition. It is actually a crazy ad clearing weapon. On top of that, guys, do not sleep on the ignitions you get for shattering. When I first read that, I was honestly like, oh, that's flavor text. It's called an icebreaker. Until, as you can see right here, we were fighting this random strike boss and my teammate is using a behemoth titan. Guys, you can see every single headshot I get on this enemy, I'm shattering it because the behemoth is freezing it so often and I'm getting an ignition explosion every single precision shot. That's actually a lot of extra damage. Like this is potentially a new DPS strategy. If you can have, again, even someone using a behemoth or something else that will cause constant freezes, one person with an icebreaker getting that uh, constant ignition explosion, that could actually be pretty damn sweet. However, will that damage actually surpass the other DPS-oriented sniper rifles? I mean, you have the Whisper of the Worm, the Cloud Strike. I don't exactly think so. I think the Icebreaker is actually better suited for an ad clearing weapon that just happens to be able to do some decent DPS when you do come across a boss or whatever. And the ammo jetting combined with the fact that it's insane for ad clearing means that this might be like the new best overall PVE sniper, a sniper that's actually good in all of the content leading up to the boss fight, including the boss fight, right? So definitely, I think this is pretty sick for PVE. But what about PvP? Because we have some big questions in terms of ammo genning and this new damage archetype. Well, really interesting, in PvP, as you can see right here, we are going to get, for a body shot, 136,000 damage, and then for a headshot, you get 473 damage and again you do get that ignition explosion in pvp which already means you're going to be seeing some disgusting multi-kill clips with this thing but in terms of how does that compare to my macabre again that aggressive frame it turns out 
it's the same exact damage. Even though it does way more damage in PvE, in PvP, it's coded exactly the same as an aggressive frame. So it doesn't do any more damage than a normal aggressive frame sniper. However, in terms of the ammo genning, that does work. As you can see right here, I simply get two kills and I instantly get one ammo into my magazine. That's really good. I mean, like, two kills. You get a free ammo. And think about that free ammo for a second. First of all, it can still pick up ammo bricks, as you can see. So you can treat this as a normal sniper rifle as you're working your way to that those two kills. But if I gen an instant ammo into my magazine, I don't need to go out into danger to pick up those bricks. You can be in the back with a scout rifle shooting guys and genning ammo for your icebreaker. And it's every two kills. Every two kills with your other weapons, you get one ammo back for your icebreaker. That's a pretty darn good rate. So you're going to be able to be pretty consistently having ammo for this thing in the crucible. Again, like this might be an actual menace in PvP because of this ammo gen. That is not that hard to do. And so guys, that's it for the look at the Icebreaker. Overall, this is a pretty sick weapon. I can't necessarily say it's place in the meta right now. I, I don't think the DPS is going to be matching other DPS snipers for PvE, but for just general use, this is like the only general purpose sniper I would actually want to put in my loadout. You know what I mean? Like, I would never even consider putting a sniper in my loadout unless I was specifically using it for DPSing a specific boss. This is the first time I would be like, yeah, I'll use this sniper rifle for the activity. It's totally great there. It's going to be insane for ad clearing, right? Anyways, guys, again, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.